my name's Nick and I'm a brand rep for Google Textiles and today I want to show you some of this absolutely gorgeous um, reversible two-tone sequin fabric which is from Kaboodle Textiles and Mel sent me to have a play with um, which I have done um, and I'm going to be showing you how you can make one of these awesome little coin purses and um, you don't need a pattern to do them they're really quick really easy you can make them absolutely any size you like and um, they're also fully lined so make lovely little gifts or just something to spoil yourself so um, keep watching and we'll show you what you need to do so the sequin fabric that we're going to be working with today is this absolutely gorgeous reversible rainbow sequins um, and as you can see it's a lovely glittery shiny silver on one side and rainbow on the reverse if you look at it close up you can see all those wonderful sequins hundreds and hundreds of them and they've all been stitched onto the backing fabric um, which in this case is quite a light non-stretch um, fabric it's quite slippy um, on the back where it has been stitched it isn't quite so slippy so i'm hoping it go through the machine okay um, but i guess we'll see um, i'm going to be making a small coin purse or pouch zipper pouch some people call them um with my fabric today um i'm going to be using this lovely cactus fabric um which is a cotton um non-stretch cotton um, from capoodle textiles to line my pouch and i'm going to be using sharps needles um in my sewing machine i've heard a couple of people mention that they use ballpoint needles for sewing sequins so I'm going to give these a go first and I do have some ballpoint needles on um, standby um, if I don't get on very well with the sharps but we'll see how we get on. So I'm going to be making a small coin purse with my fabric today and um, so I've also got some cotton that I'm going to be using to line the pouch with and I've got a zip. Now you can make these pouches as big or as small as you like um, but the size is really determined by the size of your zip so this zip is a five inch zip which means that the working part of the zip from the zipper pull here down to this end bit here um, is five inches and then you've also got this extra bit on the end these tails um, and it's the full length that is going to determine the size of the rectangles of fabric that you're going to cut so although the zip itself is a five inch zip so oops, from there to there in its entirety it's probably more like six and a half so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting six and a half um, lengths of fabric for both the lining and for the outer and then how deep you want it um, is completely up to you really I'm probably going to go for about five or six inches um, but it really doesn't matter it's whatever whatever suits you and whatever suits whatever you're making the pouch for so coming to cutting your fabric, I've actually made a template um, for myself to help me cut out the fabric. So this is six and a half inches long, which is the length of my zip. And I've actually done it by six inches. But like I said before, you can change that length to suit you. It really doesn't matter. It's whatever you're going to be using to store, whatever you're going to be storing inside your pouch. Um, so I'm just going to place that onto my fabric. Um, and I'll probably use just a weight to hold it in place, making sure that the fabric's nice and flat. Also what I've done before I did this, I probably should show you, I just brushed my fabric so that all the sequins were facing the same way, so that you're not going to get them all crossing over and making a mess. Hopefully it'll make it a lot easier to cut, um, that's what I'm hoping anyway. So I'm going to put my weight on there. I've got a pen here that I'm just going to use to mark out the corners. Just so it makes it a little bit easier to cut. Now this is a Posca pen. I think it's called Posca. I do buy chalk pens, but they never seem to work as well. Although this is running out a little bit actually. So just wanna see it's running out. 
just want to mark all the way around so that you've got a guide to cut you could cut it i suppose just with this hold it you know holding it down but i'm not too confident that it won't move around loads so we'll see how this goes i'm also going to be using scissors which i do not use normally to cut my fabric um if you use your fabric scissors to cut sequins you're just going to ruin them um or so i am told so there we are it's my square or rectangle so very gently i'm just going to cut out this rectangle trying very hard not to pull the fabric or stretch it See the mess it's making already. Um, also, probably worth mentioning if you try to do this with your rotary cutter. First, I'm not sure if your rotary cutter, blah, 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 your rotary cutter would go through it. Um, you probably have to put quite a lot of pressure on your rotary cutter, which will be quite dangerous. But also, I think you would absolutely ruin your blade. Okay, so there we are, that's that. There we go. First one, so I'm gonna need another one of those. One for the front and one for the back. Gosh, look at all that. It's very pretty, but very messy. So I'm gonna need another, another square for the back and I'm also going to need two out of your line, uh, the lining fabric um, for your lining. So I'm going to carry on with that and um, I'll meet you back here in two minutes. Okay, so you can see I've cut all my pieces to size. So now we're going to start assembling them um, ready to sew. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with one of the lining pieces and we're going to place it face up and we're going to take our zip. Where's it gone? There we are. And we're going to place that face up as well, lining it up with the edges of the top like that and then we're going to take our sequin fabric or whatever fabric that you're going to be using for the outside of your pouch and we're going to place that face down now just be careful that you've got your sequins the right way up um, for example here i want my sequins um going down and rather than like that so it's more like it would be if it was a mermaid's tail, I suppose, or a fish or something. So whatever way you're going to have it, just make sure you're aware that they're facing down or you're aware that they're facing up. So that obviously when you're sewing the other side, you know um, to do the same thing. So my outside fabric can be facing down and just making sure that all the sequins are all facing the same way. They're not sticking up or anything. And I'm just going to match up. All the raw edges. Um, now what I'm going to use to pin these together rather than pins um, is Wonder Clips which are, really are as wonderful as um, they're named. So I'm just going to clip one at either end just being careful um, that all of the layers are lined up and I'm going to clip in the middle again just keeping all those sequins from flipping over on themselves as much as possible and keeping all the edges lined up like that and um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew along the top okay so I'm at my machine and what I've done is I've installed one of the sharps needles just there and I've also added a zipper foot um because that will help me get really nice and close up to this zip and I'm just going to start sewing just being very careful to keep everything nice and lined up just feeling for where the zip is make sure I'm not going to be sewing over it or anything okay and the needle has gone in okay. Good start so far. 
I'm going to back stitch. I'm going to be able to keep everything lined up. It's slipping a little bit. Just taking it nice and slowly, not rushing to get this sewn. To see if you're pulling, wants to pull the fabric to the other side. Very careful, we're coming up to the pull on the zipper, so I just want to be careful on that. Okay, back stitch a little bit. Okay, that wasn't too scary. Let's see how it looks. Okay, it's not too bad, although it's it might have been a little bit close to the zip. See, the problem I've got is the sequins where I've sewn them are folding over so that they're actually getting in the way of the zip a little bit. Can you see that? So what I might need to do is to take that off and redo it with a smaller seam allowance. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I have unpicked and I have reclipped, and I'm going to try this again with a smaller seam allowance. Oops. Trying my best to keep layers together again. Um, is the thing about sewing isn't it it's just all trial and error if you've never done something before I just realize i haven't back stitched that so we'll just go back a little bit better I've got a zip that works okay marvelous so you're going to do the other side exactly the same way as you did first time around so you're going to take your lining piece and place it right side up you're going to take your zip and place that right side up And then your outside fabric, making sure all your sequins are facing the right way, you're going to place right side down. And you're going to line those up perfectly again. And using your wonder clips, you can very, very carefully sandwich those layers together. And once you've done this, it's time to sew again. So. I'm just going to move that clip down a little bit. Okay. Needle in. stitches and back stitch and then off we go again taking it nice and slowly being really careful that all of your layers are lining up and that that fabric isn't slipping around too much because it really likes to Needle up 
and let's have a little look. And there we go. I don't think that looks too bad. So next what I'm going to do is just to press these seams open and with sequins you really do need to be extremely careful um, because obviously um, they're made of plastic and plastic melts. So I'm using a low heat and you're probably going to want to just test it before you um on a bit of scrap uh, um, sequin fabric before you do any pressing just to make sure that you're not going to melt them but I'm just going to ever so carefully press these seams open so I'm starting on the lining fabric first and everything just looks so much more professional and, um, and neat I think when it's all pressed lining side done and then on this side I'm just going to take a piece of fabric if I can find one handy which I can't so what I'm going to do I'm just going to use this tea towel and I'm just going to stick that inside there I'm just going to push as best as I can the sequins out of the way And I'm just going to give that a good press. It's making lots of crunching noises, which is a little bit, leaves me a little bit uneasy, but I think you've just got to go with it. Trust your gut. Okie dokie, pressing done. So now we've got our fabric lovely and pressed, so it's all nice and flat it's time to sew it all together. And we do that by sewing the right sides together. So this fabric, sorry, the sequin fabric goes right sides together as well as the lining. But before we do that, we just need to make sure that this zip is open. If we don't open the zip, then when we come to turning it back right way out, um, you're not gonna be able to because the zip's closed. And so you're gonna find yourself in a little bit of a mess. So we need to fold it over and place the right sides together on the sequin fabric and I'm going to use quite a few clips on this because it is incredibly slippy especially now it's right sides together just being careful to line up all the edges and when you get to the zip you just need to be conscious of um, the fact that you need it to be facing the right way the seams to be facing the right way so you want to push so that it's all facing the um, the seams are facing the um, lining fabric. So push that zip, the extra of the zip, so it's facing the lining, if that makes sense. And clip there. And again, with the zip, you want to push so it's facing the lining, like that. And then just clip this bit of cotton, which is much easier. I think we're just going to use two or three on this one. Okay, so now it's all clipped, what we're going to do is going to take the sewing machine. I'm going to leave just a small section here. Um, in fact, I'm going to use my clips to mark them. You can use pins if you want, um, if you're um, susceptible to forgetting. Um, I know I do sometimes and close it all off and they have to go back and unpick. And sometimes if you use a pin instead, um, it's different and you, you don't get carried away with the sewing and you remember that you actually do need to stop to leave a gap. But um, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna go all the way around and I'm gonna end here. So here we go. Okay, okay. And you can go ahead and switch out your um, you press the foot again if you wanted to. I've still got the zipper one on for the moment. Um, if you wanted to swap back to your normal foot, then you can, or you know, you use this one. It's not a problem. So, just gonna back stitch a bit before we get going. And here we go. When I get to a corner, I'm just gonna stop. I press the foot up, pivot, 
and carry on. Right, I'm going to slow down a bit now and get into the zip. I'm going to push all of these straggly ends of my thread to one side. I don't want to them getting caught up. And I'm just going to take it nice and slowly as I go over this zip. Now, if your machine is a little bit uneasy about going over it, you can give it a hand by turning um, the wheel manually to get it over. Mine seems to be handling it okay. And I'm on the sequins now. So again, just like we did before with the sequins, taking it nice and slowly, really making sure we're taking the time to line up those edges. And when we get to the end, I'm just going to pick it again. stretch now so I just need to remember again that we need to leave a gap and with the zip nice and slowly to go over not to do our machine any damage all stitched up and what I've just gone ahead and done is I've clipped the corners and um, just to reduce some of the bulk and I'm just gonna reduce some of this seam allowance as well just so it's not too bulky I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut loads of this off just being extra careful not to cut into any of the stitches just a little bit oops okie dokie so moving that out of the way now we're going to turn it the right side out so stick our hands into the hole and then what i do is i tend to go for one corner first so i get a corner and i push um against it with my finger to push it out so it's nice and square find the other corner again and we want to do the same with the lining one corner there's the other one okay so push it all out through the hole there we go Now what we can do, if, um, if you want to be really neat about things, you could do some invisible stitching, like a ladder stitch or something, on this opening here. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run it very quickly through the sewing machine. Oops, a daisy. Back on. Right. And because I'm really lazy, I'm not even going to bother matching my thread and you can obviously do this as neat and as nice as you want but I'm just going to be super quick this is a bag for me if you're going to give it as a gift or if you're selling it then you're going to want to be a bit more careful with it but I'm not that bothered right okay that all through and there we have it make sure your zips nice and pushed out and we've got one sequin coin purse 
And like I said before, you can make these as big or as small as you like. Um, you could make one like so it's a little clutch bag for going out. Um, whatever you fancy, really. I've got a stray, stray thread there. I'm just going to clip out. Um, and yeah, they make lovely gifts. Um, and the kids love them. Ellen will probably end up having this one, I imagine, when she sees it. And there we are. And the sequins weren't too bad to sew with. I think they'll probably get easier with practice. Um, just keeping the layers together was a little bit of a struggle with them slipping and sliding all over the place. But it's just something you've got to take your time doing, not get yourself too stressed out, use lots of clips. Um, the sharps needles did a really good job. Didn't have any problems with those at all. I didn't even have to try the ball points. These just did a great job. Um, so there we are. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you've got any questions, then please let me know in the comments. And um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.